Well, the days of tax-free shopping on the Internet are coming to a close. The U.S. Senate passed a bill today to impose a tax on shoppers buying goods online. The bill is known as the Marketplace Fairness Act, and it is backed by senators on both sides of the aisle, as well as numerous retailers across the country. It requires retailers whose profits top $1 million to collect local sales taxes. Joining me now to talk about what this means for your wallet, RT correspondent Margaret Howell. Thank you for joining me. Now, Margaret, for years people have been dealing with this in the real world in terms of buying um, gifts or, or actually buying things for themselves even. Was this online sales tax just inevitable? Oh, inevitable? No, Megan, no. We live in a consumer-driven market, and this bill does more than level the playing field for consumers and businesses alike. You know, when I went to the Senate floor today to listen to these arguments, both for and against why we need this bill, uh, there are several questions that are left unanswered, which is concerning for me. So let's talk about what exactly this bill establishes. Okay, certainly. So, well, first of all, this bill is great for big businesses like Walmart and Amazon. Um, the bill would establish, essentially, a universal tax on, on all, all online sales, which means that the small businesses who maybe aren't, aren't offering or aren't making their customers pay that would be forced to. Also states that don't have the brick and mortar stores can, can go after online businesses that are doing commerce with their citizens. Sure. Now, President Obama and numerous other Congress members, as well as retailers like Amazon and Walmart, as you said, all support this bill. Who is against it and why? Well, let me start by saying that most businesses are entrepreneurial. They're micro businesses. Um, they're in very specialized areas, and they have, you know, they have to do everything they can to cut overhead. Now, businesses like the Walmart giant and the Amazon giant, who did lobby for this bill, it's one big giant tax mandate. And these taxes, they're already paying them. They want to see their counterparts pay just as they are, which could put a lot of people out of business. Now, at the same time, state and local economies have to earn their revenue somewhere, um, and the fact is that more and more people are turning to the internet. I mean, Cyber Monday alone last year, Cyber Monday, just for uh, those who don't know, is the internet equivalent of Black Friday. They had 129 million Americans actually shop online. Online shopping has grown itself to a $226 billion a year in industry. So is this a means of leveling the playing field in terms of getting everyone on the same page for taxing them? Well, yes, Megan, it is. Proponents say yes, but it, it does more than just do that. If it just did that, it may be okay. This is what it does that's alarming. States like New Hampshire that don't currently have a sales tax, this law would require them to collect and split potential revenue with other states. So they become a tax collector for other states, essentially, which can create a problem if you think about it. Sure. Um, now, obviously, there's a lot of critics for and against this. A lot of the Republican uh, side of the aisle was actually against this, along with, uh, I know, internet retailer E was against this. So let's talk about the critics that argue about uh, the fact that this is going to hurt small businesses on the internet realm. What about small businesses in the real world realm? Does it help their business potentially to tax everyone fairly? Well, it does and it doesn't. So those brick and mortar stores that are, you know, essentially in the realm of states now, they reap tax deductions. They see benefits already that online stores just don't see. So in terms of leveling the playing field, this bill, in my my opinion just doesn't do that. Um, what it's going to do essentially is force small businesses to pay up when maybe they can't, um, which we could see the benefit, you know, the reaping the, the hazardly effects of this soon, in my opinion. And Margaret, is there any indication as to how this tax system will work? Obviously, there can be a retailer selling it in one state, the manufacturer can be in another state, and it could be shipping out of a third state. So who earns those taxes? Certainly. So, well, it, in answer to your question, everybody, which creates the mess. And I love that you brought that up, Megan, because it's so critical. I want to give you a, a like a microcosm example here, California. Now, they can audit up until six years. They have that law in the books that says we can audit businesses for six years. We can go after the business. We can demand their consumer data. And that is uh, a big deal because you have California wanting to fork over. I mean, one senator said that on the floor today. He said the audits would be overwhelming for this bill. And I think he's right. RT correspondent Margaret Howell, we know that this uh, bill is now moving from the Senate, which passed in the Senate 69 to 27, and is now heading to the House of Representatives. I'm sure you'll be uh, keeping us updated. Thank you, Megan.